you want a spooky hair clip? Uh, yep. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Will you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Cake, and I'm your best friend. I'm just gonna take your here. Hello, and welcome to Andy's living room. I'm your best friend, Cake. And I'm your best friend, Cake. Yeah, I'm your best friend, Cake. And this is my living room. Good enough. Good enough? Yes, good enough. <laughs> I love it. Today, we are going to be summoning our pumpkin sun Bart, but we're also going to be proving ghosts. Beyond a reasonable doubt. We're gonna prove the existence of ghosts with an anecdote. A little bit of context about our pumpkin son Bart. Last year we carved a pumpkin. We carved a pumpkin, we deliberated on its name, and Bart revealed itself to us. Mm -hmm. And we decided that it should be an annual tradition to summon him into his little husk. Last year, his body husk was more beany. It was more of a can of Slindrical. beans. Cylindrical. Can of tomatoes. Yes, that is true. Bart made good friends with Addie. Picture one, picture two, picture three. We'll do that in post. Do we have three pictures? I have a bunch of pictures. Okay. Shall we get the carving utensils? Yes. So, we just had takeout. So, I've got this elegant box to put pumpkin guts in, and there's blades inside. I have a relic from last year. I, in fact, have the original artwork of Bart. That's him. That's our boy. That's the guy. Cut to image of Bart. We can do that. Thank you. No, we can do all kinds of things in post. I really appreciate your direction. Thank you. So we've been talking a lot about proving the existence of ghosts, and maybe we need to go into depth there a little bit more. Andy and I, Last summer. 100% experienced ghost. And we experienced ghost in a friend's house. And friend wasn't there. And we didn't think it was appropriate to tell him about ghost because he lived there alone. And we thought that that would be kind of a bummer. Like if someone was staying at our house and then they left and they got to flee the country and they were safely away. Mm -hmm. And then at that time they were like, hey, by the way, about that ghost you live with, that's weird. Uh, so we elected not to tell him. We swore each other to secrecy until the day he moved. I messaged you, Alex, three weeks ago with a really cryptic message that just said, hey, are you still in Italy? And then you responded, no, I'm not. And then I ghosted you for two weeks because I'm like, we're gonna film this video, we'll send it to him that weekend. And then we did that weekend and the weekend after. And, the, and now we're here. It's like two and a half weeks. I don't even know. It's been a while. Alex, I'm sorry. Why don't you... Chop the top? Chop the top? To start this story, we actually don't start in Italy. We start in Guernsey. We're staying in, what is it, a bed? It's not a bed and breakfast, this is a hotel. It's not like a high rise hotel. It's like a cute little seaside. So Guernsey is in between France and England. And from what I heard from the English people who are attending the wedding, they're like, it feels like a nice English resort but also with a ton of French influence. So all the streets are very French named and there's heavy, heavy French vibes. And everyone's very snooty. And you can, you can basically like- <laughs> You're just like, uh-huh, <laughs> we do hate the French. Chop that top, chop that top. I don't know how big this is. Yeah, 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 that seems good. Uh, so we're staying in this hotel and I have a dream that a sexy ghost is seducing Andy. And I'm very upset by this dream uh, because what's this ghost got that I don't? You know what I mean? And also rude. Like she knows I'm standing right there. She's doing it on purpose. Cause these particular ghosts in my dream, like they need to sort of like amass loyalty. They need to like amass followers, kind of like American Gods. Mm. That's interesting, isn't it? We just started watching American Gods. So that's a problem for me, cause I'm like, Andy, like, can you not see that this is one of those ghosts that's trying to amass followers? Like, are you not acutely aware of the fact you're being manipulated? And he's just like, that ass though. And so I wake up and I'm like, I'm angry at him, A, betrayal, and B, like, come on, 
Like, you're smarter than that. But I do not tell him about this dream because I don't want to seem insecure, you know? <laughs> like, I don't want to be like, oh, Andy, like, we were cheating on me with a ghost with, you know what I mean? I didn't go there. Not a cute look. Context has been given. The spooky scene has been set. Fast forward a few days. We are in Italy. Where are we in Italy? Milan? Are we at the Milan part? Yeah, I think we should just like get to the part okay. where we're staying in the place that's decidedly haunted. Yes. So we stayed in one place in Milan first. But that, oh, but it was kind of spooky because ants were everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, less spooky and just more kind of like gross and inconsiderate. But anyways, we have a really, really nice time with Alex who we had let know we were going to Italy a few months before and he's like, hey, come stay with me. Um, I've got a spot. And then once we figured out the dates and the wedding situation, he's like, I leave the day you guys get in or like the next day or something like that. So we had one day with Alex. We had a wonderful dinner at a place called Triba. Tripe. It was tripe in, in Italian. Why are you remembering details that have nothing to do with the ghost? Mm -hmm. We get his keys. We spend our night in our place. Alex flies out the next day. We come over and we stay at his really lovely place in Milan. We should talk about the place. So the place was clearly a building that had been converted into apartments. Mm -hmm. And Alex's apartment in particular was interesting because it had been cobbled together by some other space. That was very satisfying. It was clearly a bunch of spaces that had just been uh, combined together. And I noticed immediately upon entering, so it's like this, it's this super old building. So you could tell where the walls have been carved and the spaces have been combined. And immediately upon entering, I was Compl I lost my bearings completely. And I have really good bearings. I'm that person in the mall who knows which way I'm pointing. I have a really good sense of direction, but I was always finding myself disoriented in Alex's apartment. I was thinking that was probably because those were not the intuitive places for those entrances to be, like for corridors to be. They had sort of been retrofitted after the fact. And I don't know if I was like cluing into subtle cues from architecture where you're like, oh, you know, this door frame doesn't, doesn't match the others, whatever, I don't know. It was also pretty sizable, especially for all the places that we stayed in the UK and anywhere we stayed in Italy. It was big, it was nice, Very it was big. like spacious. When you were sitting in a room, I felt comfortable, but when I had to traverse from room to room, I was like, oh yeah, that way. Like, I mean, it was big, but- It was I also mean, a loft space too, so there was like, Lots some separation. I mean, it wasn't like two full floors where you're like one completely above, but there was like a nice loft bedroom upstairs that you like climbed a steep ladder stairwell to get to. Also, you know, sorry, I should get to the ghost part, but I do want to just like build the scene a little bit more. You know, um, like how some closets are really, really spooky. The closet in the bedroom that was up in the loft, that was a spooky closet. I found that closet super spooky. Uh, it reminded me of The Grudge. I don't know if you've seen The Grudge or if you've like been to Japan where the closets are often connected to the attic. Mm. So like you've got the sliding door to the closet and you've got all your storage space and then you like look up and it's like, oh, the roof is up. I could scurry into the attic and no one would know. Uh, so I didn't actually look in the closet, but just like looking from the outside <clears throat> and I think it was like open like a little smith. I just looked at it and I was like, well, that's where I would hide if I were a ghoul, 100%. You have a fear of closets, so when we go to bed and the closet's open a crack, you have issue with that. What I have an issue with is closet monsters. <laughs> like the, cl the closet's the vessel for the, the ghouls. You're right, that was absurd to me. <laughs> In, you're, you're not afraid of closets, that's ridiculous. Who would fear a box that contains... Ghouls. Ghouls, not I. All right, now that the spooky scene has acutely been set. The night we were out with Alex, we were eating outside and I was getting absolutely devoured by mosquitoes. So the night that we were in Alex's place, I was still 
just absolutely covered bug bites down all my legs. My knees were swollen. It was like real bad. It was really gross. I'm pretty sure I was taking antihistamines for it, but like I was having not fever dreams, but not great sleep type situation. Early morning, we both got up and just had like uneasy sleeps. And are we getting to this part of the story? Yeah, I mean, that's the only place to go. There is a spooky-ish hallway, and, and like we described earlier, it kind of connects one space, like one of the sections of the home with the other, and it feels like this probably served as a hallway for something else, or it's just, it was kind of, it was creepy. It was a little bit like scary, the way the light came in. Oh yeah, we were in the backyard of a church too. If you looked out the bathroom window, you're literally looking in to like the backyard of a church. Was there a graveyard? I cannot confirm or deny this, but my mind is definitely visualizing that. I was very uncomfortable. I was covered in bites and we were just kind of milling about the house. Just early morning, just woke up sort of thing. And I go to use the bathroom. I come out of the bathroom and I see Hannah like just like walk across towards the loft bedroom kind of area. And I just see like her butt and her calves. And I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna like follow her. And I follow her through. I like poke my head around and I'm like, oh wow, she's like quick, I didn't see her. And I'm like, okay, she's in the bathroom. That's like the quickest place you could sort of escape to. There's so. two bathrooms. Yes, there's two bathrooms. Um, I stick my head in and I even go like Hannah or like I call out to her sort of thing. I don't see her in the bathroom. So I'm like, oh, she must have gone up the ladder. So I start to go up the ladder and I look up and she's not there. But I felt very distinctly that Hannah walked by in either her underwear or her short shorts. I just like saw her butt and her legs kind of like move to the left. She was not there. She was in fact in the kind of like living room space to the right. Where you had left me from my perspective, like I hear Andy come out of the bathroom and I hear him take off down the hall and I don't hear him call out for me. I hear like a very like timid and like trepidatious, hey, like I, I heard, like I heard the feet, like the, the pace of your steps and the way you said, hey, I was just like, what is happening? He comes in and he's like, did you did you move? And I'm like, no, I have not moved. What is going on? Like, you sounded scared. Andy then admits that he was seduced by a sexy ghost. Are you, like, you heard it, right? I have this fear that this guy's gonna see a thick ghost and just go blindly towards it like a true fool. And like, what happened? It's an Italian house siren calling me to my Italian death. But the, the, no, well, you, you took an Italian nap, so I'm all spooked. I'm spooked. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Andy's like, I sure am sleepers. Immediately goes back to bed. Like we, uh, we go for a little ghost hunt because he tells me, I'm like, well, okay, let's retrace the steps of this ghost because I want to say a couple things. Uh, we do not find the ghost. We do find the bed. And Andy immediately just is like, well, hmm, what's about it for me? And he goes to sleep. And I'm just sitting there like- I didn't sleep well. I was covered in bug bites. It was, it was not a good time. That is the one silver lining is that you <laughs> left me alone in Ghostville, but fortunately you were having not a great sleep and were a little bit itchy the whole time. <laughs> so there you have it. Definitive proof of ghost. Also, I'm a precog. Oh. We wanted to share with you, Alex, like immediately to be like, do you have ghost stories to tell us? Like, have you felt like a premonition, any like weird presences in your home? But we knew you were living by yourself. Do we need to fill your mind with that? And we agreed on no. Yeah, we were like, that wouldn't be very rad of us at all. So we elected not to tell you until now, now that you're safely away, unless the ghost has followed you, unless you're like yes. one of the sexy ghost followers. In which case, like, please don't show her this. She <laughs> like, had a nice butt and nice shapely calves. Strong, like she's been strong. Like, doing yeah. a lot of spin. My theory is that that hallway that Andy saw her move in, my theory is not that a sexy ghost was trying to seduce my partner because then I would never sleep. My theory, I, I need you to hear my theory. Okay. My theory 
is that that divide, that dividing area, like that area where two units were combined or two spaces were combined, I think it must have been like a thoroughfare. And like the reason Andy wasn't able to see anyone in the, in the space he thought they were going is because they went through a wall. They mm. went through a wall. They were following like a different path. I think it was Sunday morning. She might've been on her way to church. I don't know, but I, I cannot bear the idea of sexy ghosts because like, how am I gonna compete? You got a nice button and, and cap. But like, good energy. do I strike fear into the hearts of men, you know? Yes, yes you do. Myself and your father. If any of you have questions about ghosts, we are experts. Experts on ghosts. If questions about ghosts. If you have questions about Alex. If you have questions about fine Italian wine, uh, Guys, let's trace. Oh, you're so responsible. Do you not trace? I do. I do. All right. Before we carve his face, we want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Dankmart. Shout out at whatever the fuck my handle is. I think that's what he changed his handle to. I've been following him for some time, and I never thought to actually order food from his store. But Hannah has. This is the second box. I haven't seen anything in it, so I will treat it as my unboxing. Thank Mart started as, I think they were a dispensary to begin with, like a different name, it was like THC Vancouver or something like that. And then they opened up like a snack store where they had like rare snacks from Asia and like weird bodega fountains and that sort of thing. And a very good social media presence. You guys should take note. Um, the first thing we have, Ah, cookie sticks and cream dip. I thought these looked so good, like Dunkaroos, but Oreos. Yeah, and they're heavy. Next up, we have Ruffles queso cheese. They're Spanish on it, and they are from America. What a weird way to open this box that they've come up with. I think it's like single dispensary, right? Like it should Is be it? Like, like, you gotta, there, like that. It's cute. Next we have salted egg flavor Lay's. That's wild. This looks Indonesian. Thai. I'm ignorant. This is Thai Lay's salted egg flavor. You can see the yolk dripping down. I thought it just looked so good. Next up we have Oreo Thin Bites White Fudge Dip. Hannah is the winner. We ordered a box last time and I told her my favorite Oreos that I ever had are ones they release around Christmas and they're white chocolate robed enrobed, like dipped Oreos. This is a mini version, so. What up? Cool. Yeah, man, I need the rest of the cookie. There's so much icing. That's delicious. I mean, it's like eating an Oreo, but like. Sweeter. Deconstructed. Next we have king size. White cream Reese's. White chocolate. White creme. I think that's a cute way of them saying chocolate. They probably aren't allowed to say chocolate. Well, you know, white chocolate's not actually chocolate. I know. You wanna give a little backstory on this? I do want to. Last time we ordered, we ordered the white chocolate thins and they came pre-packaged, like individually wrapped, and I'm just like, this is so wasteful, but so delicious. And I found that they sold them in regular size Reese's, way less packaging, actually better yeah. value, like candy to dollar, uh, you get more bang for your buck. The fins were nice, but there is something that I'm like super excited to eat, like a bigger cup. I, I like I like the idea of more candy in my mouth, but I like the thins because it's like, oh, I'm just gonna have like a little something, I'm gonna have something sweet. Like I like that, but just the amount of plastic, I'm like, no, there's no way. We're that, not going to elementary school recess with them. Could you imagine though, if like your parents packed you one of like you'd he'd be the most cool kid. We have spicy chex mix, not just hot. Jalapeno hot. It's no. like a two on the. It's a hundred. What's the scale? Not the Richter scale. Scoville. 
Scoville, that's what it is. Or how many, some measurement of water to dilute, fully dilute the spice so you can't taste it anymore. Go on. We're getting to the small items. We have Starburst All Pink. Oh, I just realized there's probably gonna be watermelon in there. No, it's 100% strawberry. That's your jam? That's your jam. I thought it would be like, you know, all the pink flavors that you can get from Starburst, but just put into one super pink pack. I'm so glad it's just strawberry. Next, we have Reese Big Cup. King size, stuffed with Reese's Pieces. It's so heavy, and sorry, just one second. Look how cute this package is. Look at this design. The little Reese PC dots, the like color blocking, that cross section, the little the little dots. Oh, it's perfect. It's just so thoughtful. This one is a repeat order. Nerd rope. I think it was maybe one of my favorite things we got last time. I love nerds. I can't say I collect nerds, but like I collect nerds, but I eat them, so I don't really collect them. Like anytime we travel to new countries or in the states or anytime I find like new flavors of nerds, I will always buy them. That was like the sleeper hit for me. Like I didn't realize how delicious it would be. I was like, oh, okay, whatever, it's a novelty. Delicious, it's a great way to enjoy Super nerds. Super satisfying, very messy. I got a lot of nerds on the couch. Back to back nerds, we got big chewy nerds. Crunchy shell outside, soft and chewy inside. And finally, we have caramelized white gold Kit Kat. I you know have no, what you're getting into with this? I have no clue. I just was like, that sounds good. Oh, this is fun. They don't explain anything. They're just like caramelized white gold. The only thing I can think is like, is it like supposed to be um, white chocolate that's caramel flavored? Is that what it is? I don't know. And this is Addy. Hannah doesn't like it when I put Addy in boxes. I don't think Addy likes it when you put her in boxes. She seems relatively She's chill. Dumb. They're like, <laughs> She's like, I'm fine, please give me give nerds. nerds. They remind me of those dinosaur eggs. Did you ever get the oatmeal that had dinosaur eggs in them? Oh yeah, I mean, we didn't really eat oatmeal, but I know exactly what you're talking about. How do you use? Just think nerd flavor texture thing on the outside by their chewy. They're as if you took a nerd rope and like blow torched it so it's like a hard shell on the outside. You still have the gooey inside. A brulee nerd rope. A little more floral. Oh, I know what you mean. The purple ones can get it. Shout out to Dankmart. Thank you for the sponsorship. Hmm. Okay, let's draw a face on this. Yeah. This is the part where we just go time lapse, right? And it's just like. Mm. So I'd like to introduce the viewers to Koala Boo Boo, one of my absolute oldest friends. And sometime in 2000, 2009, I formed a ball hockey team where we all wear flannel jerseys. So we made him a tiny one. I actually made one and then I left to go out or something and I came home. And, and the backstory is I cut the sleeves off of our jerseys and the leftover sleeves I turned into this jacket because with a little cuff button, it makes a perfect little like collar shirt for him. But anyways, I left and when I came home, he had a much better shirt on because my mom saw what I had done and seen how poorly I did it and grabbed the extra materials and made him a much better fitting one. I just love that your mom saw it and was like, oh, I see what he's doing. At least I see what he's trying what he's to attempted. do. <laughs> and she just like, without saying anything, was like, here you go, my child. I've, yeah. 
I've done a better job than you. Tell me your vision for how this can of tomatoes contributes to our beefy little boy. Ooh, I think it's just like an alternate body for him. Okay, okay, yeah, I do want them to have the full Bart experience. This is Bart's hermit crab experience. Mm. Every year, he sheds his old body. Oh God, he looks so cute though. Can you see why he became our pumpkin child? Like, we put him on this can of tomatoes, we put his little lumber hack jersey on, and we were just like, this is our baby. This is our pumpkin boy. And Addie instantly was like, I don't like him. Je jealous. Sniffed him, sniffed him a few times and was just like, mm hmm. Mm. Wanna see Bart? Hello, Addie. <laughs> I like the can as an option, but what I really like about this is like the over the garden wall vibe and also looks a lot more like Hey, I think we got to see how he looks With fire inside of him mm -hmm. uh, Yep, Ooh, that top is cooking. Is it? Okay, like I'm pretty content. I'm pretty happy. We did good Ooh, He's totally fucking real What's up? Comment, like, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Send this video to someone who likes proving ghosts. He lost his baby teeth. He did, cause he's a grown boy. Two years old, which is like 47 in pumpkin years. Two years old in pumpkin years is probably like 184 years old or something, cause they don't live for very long. I think that's it. You think that's it? Do you have any content creators you'd like to give a shout out to, preferably? Yeah, the Dankmark guy. I said his handle wrong, but I'm sure in post we can put his handle in here. Is he BIPOC or LGBTQ plus? BIPOC. Again. He looks Chinese. Let's not put ourselves in box. <laughs> he's he's the C. He puts the C in BIPOC. People are Chinese. <laughs> People are China. I'm covered in dog hair. Yeah. I was gonna tell you, but it's not gonna pick up. It will. I'm gonna turn the contrast down. We can do it in post. I don't think you know what I'm capable of in post. <laughs> it's a star life. <laughs> anyway, today's creator shout out goes to. Who cares what my handle is? AKA Elixir G. AKA the good homie from Dankmark. Go check him out. If you live in Canada, you can get shipping from Dank Mart anywhere. The flat rate is super cheap. And like sometimes I think they're a little high when they pack your boxes. And if you tell them like, oop, you got my order wrong, they'll give you a little bit of discount code. Not that they got our order wrong that one time that we ordered. They didn't get the order wrong, but they did leave something out and then forget to do, like they, they left it out intentionally because they didn't want to send us something that was close to expiring. Um, but then they just didn't really do anything. <laughs> I had to email them to be like, hey, uh, I did want more chips. And they were like, oh yeah, sorry. We took them off the order. We'll take them off your tab and here's a discount code. Good people. They're really good people. That's like the best outcome you could get. Like 10% off. I'm your best friend, Kate. She's your best friend, Kate. If you'd like another slice of cake, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Kate Calamity. And if you wanna follow Andy. <laughs> where do they do that? Find me at Tomato Shark on Instagram. We gotta clean this up. This is my work desk. <laughs> Got guts all over it. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again after not too long. Bye.